Hi, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to talk about some techniques you can use when rendering more realistic plants using Octane for Cinema 4D. We're going to look at how you can create translucent effects, as you can see on the leaves and the flowers in this render, as well as some techniques for rendering different materials on either side of a polygon surface. This is the technique I use to create a, sort of a one texture for the top of these leaves and a different texture for the bottom of the leaves. Not only does it help to create a little bit more realism with your plants, it also helps to add a sense of depth and three-dimensionality to the plants in your scene. So let's start by taking a look at the material that I've applied to the flower petals in the scene to create this translucent effect. If I switch over to Photoshop, here's a diagram of the actual material. It's a very straightforward mixed material setup. A mixed material blends two different other types of octane materials together depending on a particular amount between 0 and 1. So a value of 1 is 100% of one material, or a value of 0 is 100% of the other material, and a value of 0.5 is a 50-50 blend between the two materials. Now I'm using a diffuse and a specular material to create the translucency effect. The diffuse is providing much of the color, and the spec is providing much of the translucency. There are a number of ways to create translucent effects when rendering with Octane for Cinema 4D. For example, you can use a medium node, such as an absorption medium or a scattering medium. However, those only work on surfaces that have thickness to them, surfaces that define a volume. So let's take a look at the geometry in our scene, in particular the flowers and the leaves of the ivy. And you can see that they are flat two-dimensional surfaces, so there's no thickness to the petals on the on the flower here. And likewise with the leaf, they're even simpler. It's just a simple polygon square with square UVs that allow us to easily map a square image texture to the surface. But since there is no thickness, we can't really use a medium node to create the translucency. Instead, we're going to use a, a cheat. It's a simple cheat, but it's a fairly effective one. We're going to create a specular material and that specular material is going to create the translucent effect. The specular material is going to have an index of refraction of 1. It's going to have a light color mapped to the transmission channel, and it's also going to have a high roughness. And that high roughness is going to create a blurred refraction that kind of scatters the light around as it passes through the surface, creating the translucency that we're looking for. And shadows cast from other leaves on the back side of the plant will come through in the translucency, creating that nice kind of glowing organic effect. So let's start by taking a look at the mix material that's applied to the flower, because that's pretty straightforward. So I'll zoom in here, and you can see here is the flower mix material. This is what's actually applied to these surfaces right here. And it simply has a slider for the amount. So as I push the amount slider one way or the other, we're going to get more or less of the one material. So as we get closer to one, we get more of the diffuse material, uh, and that provides a lot of the color of the flower itself. And as we get closer to zero, we get more of the specular material, which gets more of that uh, translucency. So if we want to dial this up or down as we're working in our scene, it makes it very easy to do that. Um, and then in the material slots, we have the diffuse material and the uh, specular material. Let's rename this. We'll call this a flower spec. And as you can see, I have just a couple texture maps applied to them. So this image texture is very simple, light colors that are painted on the flower. So mostly white and yellow with a little bit of uh, purple detail in here and a green stem. And this is plugged into the diffuse channel of our flower diffuse. And then we have uh, a bump texture that is plugged into the bump channel. So for the diffuse material, if we take a look at the settings, um, in the roughness channel, we have a fairly high roughness, about 0.9. Uh, we have, um, I have a little bit of a transmission in there to kind of pick up some of the, the uh, lighting in the shadows. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. If we take a look at the specular material, you can see that I have that same uh, image texture. This flower image texture is plugged into the transmission channel. And since this is mostly light colors, at least in the flower petals, that means more of the light is going to pass through the surface. 
So just like if you put a white color in the transmission of a specular channel, you would end up with a transparent object. It's kind of the same idea. This is almost transparent because it's mostly white and yellow with just a few colored bits right here in the center of the flower. And then of course the same bump texture is being uh, piped into the flower specular material as well. If we take a look at some of the settings here, you can see the roughness is set to about 0.59, so it's fairly rough. We could probably set this even higher to scatter the light even more. We also have a reflection that is very dark or low value, so it's a black color or float value of zero. And you want to make sure that the reflection is uh, very, very low, if not absolutely zero, so that light doesn't bounce off the surface, so that it passes through the specular surface. And then if we take a look at the index, the index of refraction is set to a value of one. I've also noticed that turning on fake shadows not only speeds up the render a little bit, it actually makes that translucent effect look a little bit better. So that's how I've set up the flower mix material that's applied to the flower geometry. So now let's take a look at the leaf, which is slightly more complex. So I'm gonna hide this diagram here. Let's take a look at the leaf diagram. So the leaf diagram has two mixed materials that are kind of nested. So I have the main mixed material that's applied to the leaf geometry. And I have a specular material that very much like the flower is providing us with a nice sort of translucency. So instead of using the amount slider, I'm controlling the mixing of the materials using a grayscale image map. Now in this mixed material, rather than just having a glossy material, I have another mixed material. And the purpose of this mixed material is to allow me to apply two different materials on either side of the leaf. So here's the actual textures that I scanned uh, that I'm using for my ivy leaves. And you can see I have uh, one color for the top and another color for the bottom. So by using that polygon side uh, octane texture as the input for my mix material, I can put all the textures related to the top of the ivy leaf on one side of the polygon and all the textures related to the bottom of the leaf on the other side of the polygon. So let's take a look in the Octane Node Editor at a graph of the material applied to the uh, ivy leaves. So it looks a little bit complicated, but it's really just a couple of nested mixed materials and a bunch of texture maps. So it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to zoom in here. This is the ivy mix. This is the material that's actually applied to the leaf surfaces. And as I mentioned before, for the amount, instead of just using the slider, I'm using a grayscale image texture. And you can see it's kind of a, a grayscale, high contrast version of that leaf scan. And you can see some of the, the veins here coming through in the leaf. It's plugged into a mount. And then in the two material slots for this mixed material, I have another mixed material and a specular material. So let's take a look at that specular material. Very similar to the flower, I have a uh, roughness, a high roughness value. So it's set to one. I also have a low reflection value set to zero or black. My index is set to one. My transmission, I have a green color. Of course, we could also put a texture map in here if we want to put even more detail in there. But for the moment, I'm just using a green color to keep it simple. And then in the opacity channel, I have this, which is kind of an alpha of that leaf shape. So it's another grayscale image, and this is cutting out the parts of the polygons that we don't need to see in the render. So you can see there's squares here in the view. But if I zoom in, you can see there's the outline of the leaf. It's kind of barely visible, but you can see it. There's the outline of the leaf. So this uh, texture map is cutting out all these parts of the polygon that we don't want to see. That's plugged into opacity. So that's it for the specular material that's plugged into the ivy mix. Let's take a look at the leaf mix. So this I called ivy mix and this I called ivy leaf mix. Probably could have come up with better names than that, but that's what I chose. Um, so in this one, for the amount, I'm using the side texture. So this is also known as polygon side. In Cinema 4D, it's called side and it's found right here in the octane textures and it's a very simple node all it does is it tells the mixed material to put one material on one side of the polygon and another material on the other side of the polygon and it uses a normal direction to determine which side gets which material and it has a single attribute which is invert which you can turn this on to flip 
these two materials if you want to have them on the opposite sides. So pretty straightforward. And plugged into the materials, I have two glossy materials. I have an ivy top glossy material and an ivy bottom glossy material. And in these materials, I have all the texture maps related to those sides of the leaf. You can see I'm using this same uh, alpha image plugged into the opacity channel of both uh, shaders here, or both materials. So that's providing that cutout. And then in the top glossy material, I have a scan of the top of the leaf, ivy leaf. I have in the roughness, another grayscale image. You'll notice that this one's fairly dark. So that's uh, causing the top of the leaf to be nice and shiny, but a little bit of detail as well. And then I have a bump texture for the top. And then if we look at uh, the material attributes, uh, I have I have a specular value of about 0.7 and uh, index of refraction of 1.45. As I increase the index of refraction, we're going to get more of that Fresnel effect. So reflections on the parts of the leaf that are kind of facing away from camera are going to be a little bit stronger. And for the bottom glossy material, I have the scan of the bottom of the leaf. You can see it's a little bit lighter in color. Sometimes what I like to do is add a color correction node so that I can kind of adjust the color even more. So to do that, I could just go into, I can go into the map section and click on color correction, drag it in here and plug it in to the diffuse and maybe use it to uh, increase the brightness or decrease the brightness and change the hue or the saturation of an I2 if I need to. And then for the roughness, I have another grayscale image texture. You can see that this one is a bit lighter than the one that is applied to the top glossy material. So that means that uh, it's going to be a little bit duller and reflections are going to be spread out a little bit more across the bottom of the leaf. And then I have a bump texture for the bottom of the leaf as well. And I've adjusted the index of refraction to be about 1.1 uh, and also made kind of a low specular value, it's like 0.18. So the glossy material that's applied to the bottom should look fairly different from the glossy material that's being used for the top. So that's a graph the mixed material that's applied to the ivy leaves. Of course, you can go in and play with this a little bit, make it even more complex uh, by adding more texture maps and uh, different nodes to the basic setup. And uh, this file will be available for download if you want to open it up and uh, tweak some of the settings and see if you can make the leaves look even more realistic. So I hope this video has given you some good ideas and some techniques that you can use when rendering plants using uh, Octane for Cinema 4D.